interested in learning Microsoft Copilot Studio, then this video is perfect for you. I'm gonna cover what this thing is, how to access it, and what all these things are that you're even looking at. There's a bunch of stuff in this interface. It's not as complicated as you think though. I'll give you a quick tour of the interface and I'm gonna talk about the major components that make up what a Copilot is. It'll also be addressing everything that you're seeing in the Copilot Studio when you're looking at a custom Copilot. Let's get into it. Now you might be completely overwhelmed if you've looked at this stuff in the past, if you've watched other videos of how to, what how to's and things like that. And I totally get it. It is very overwhelming when you first start looking at this stuff. I can promise you this can make sense to you. Let's break down what these things really are. We'll start by jumping straight into Copilot Studio. Now you can access Copilot Studio by just going to copilotstudio.microsoft.com. You'll have two different ways you could license this. Number one, if you've got Copilot from Microsoft 365, you'll be able to get in here and create certain things. If you want to create custom copilots, like the full blown things that are standalone chatbots, then you'll need the tenant license for that, which is uh, in the US, it's $200 per tenant per month. But that allows you to create unlimited chatbots. So as long as you've got one of those two licenses or you just click on the, the free trial to start your free trial, you could start playing around with this stuff. I'm going to open up a copilot that I've got created. I'm just pl I'm playing around with it, putting in a bunch of different things. Across the top here, you're going to see all of the different things, the different components, really, that make up this particular copilot. Now, we're going to cover these step by step so that you understand where these things fit in the, in the, the grand scheme of Copilots, and you'll get a lot of valuable knowledge of what these things are. I'm not going to bore you to death with 20 minutes of, of each little thing. I'm probably going to talk for a couple of minutes max on each one. This is a high level overview so that you don't get overwhelmed, but you do have a really good sense now of what this thing is, what all these different little pieces are like knowledge, topic, actions. Let's, let's start jumping into the first one with knowledge. Now you'll see knowledge as the first option here after the overview tab where you just see general information, of course. And the topics part lets you bring in just what it says, knowledge. It lets you bring in extra information that your co-pilot can use. Now, that knowledge could be from OneDrive or SharePoint. It could be from Dataverse because it ties into Power Platform because this technically is living in Power Platform. But you could also bring in a lot of knowledge from other sources. That's, the, that's one of the big ways that this thing is powerful is you add in knowledge to this Copilot for it to use in other actions and other things that we're going to be talking about in here. So that's what you really need to know about the knowledge. It lets you bring in that external knowledge because without the knowledge, all you really have is the basic conversation skills that this thing has and then the LLM that powers it. So the chat GPT, basically think of that. So it's essentially a basic chat GPT without bringing in your business knowledge. Now, moving into the topics. This is where the conversation part really starts to come into play. This is really what makes a copilot a chatbot. If you click on topics, you'll see a bunch of different ones in here. Uh, most are already predefined. Some I've created myself. And what the topic really is there for is it's there to drive the conversation. Whatever the user who's using this thing, whatever it is they're requesting, whatever need they have, whether it's information, they're trying to take action on something, they're trying to troubleshoot something maybe, those different topics, those conversations, the little nuggets of conversations really, those are going to be defined in a topic. And that really just lets you drive that conversation the way you need to in like a flowchart style. If you've done Power Automate, you'll be very familiar with kind of that flowchart style of building. And all you're going to really do is build out that conversation, asking whatever questions you need to gather the information that you need, make any decisions on that, return messages back to the user. That whole little flow, that is one particular topic. That's it. And, it, and it's usually going to be a smaller type of topic. And you could have a ton of these things. So 
And, and then the other crucial part of these topics, if we click on the issue routing one. Now, you'll see at the beginning, I've got a description in here of what this topic does. Now, this is using a generative action, which don't worry about that. In about one or two weeks, you'll have, I'll have a video that's covering that. But just know that each topic is going to have a certain way that it's going to be triggered. It could be a certain phrase that someone types in. It could be a description of what this topic addresses for a user. In one way or another, you're going to give the copilot the information it needs to know when to trigger this topic. And then when it does, it just goes down, starts up at the top, and then it goes down that, that, that flow chart style interface, this canvas. It goes down all these things, asking the questions, sending back messages, having that conversation with the user. And when it's done, it may end the conversation. It may jump to another topic and start down another tree or another uh, flow of, uh, of interactions with the user. But that's really it. And this is really the heart of what a Microsoft Copilot, a custom Copilot certainly, is. It is a, the bulk of this is a collection of topics that the user, the end user, will go through based on what they're asking the Copilot. This is, this is the bulk of it right here. Next, we're going to look at the actions. So if we click on actions, I've got one action here defined, and it's the MSN weather. So if somebody's asking for the weather, this action can get called. So what is an action? An action is some extra functionality that is going to be brought in from usually some sort of an external skill. Think of a, maybe Alexa and the skills that it has. By the way, sorry if I just triggered your Alexa in your house. And I just did it again. But it brings in external skills so that your copilot is able to do more than just simple question and answer type interactions with a user. In this case, it's going out and getting the weather. Now it's going to request things like what location is the do you want the weather for and other things. So there's going to be inputs and outputs, you know, so that you can get the weather for the region you're and you're asking about. So the actions are going to be the advanced functionality, uh, and and there's a lot of power there. There's a lot of a lot of things you can do with this, but think of them just as extra functionality beyond the simple conversational style um, abilities of a custom copilot. Now we've covered those three, and there's basically the most of what makes up a copilot. But what about when you already have one out deployed out in the world? Um, what are you supposed to do then? Well, that brings us to the next one. It's analytics. Now, part of maintaining a copilot, because this isn't just something like Power Automate where you could just fire it out there and unless something breaks, you forget about it. This ain't that kind of thing. You're going to deploy this and then you're going to need to make sure it's serving the needs that it was designed to serve. You're going to need to see how users are interacting with this. That's going to help you to go back and iterate over this, improve it, make it better, find out where it's lacking in, in certain conversational uh, topics, maybe, and, and add in those topics. You're going to refine this thing and improve it. And these analytics are going to be the key of how to do that. So there's the big takeaway. Custom copilots are not designed to set it and forget it. You're not, it's not designed to create and deploy and forget. You're going to have to monitor the analytics. You're going to have to iterate over this and uh, in a routine basis so that you can improve this for the end users. Think about it. If the end users don't like this, if they're not getting the information they need, they just stop using it. All of that effort is wasted. They go back to doing things the old way, which is probably the more time consuming way, or they just do without that information. And then you're doing a disservice to your users. Now, there's a lot of stuff in, in these things, uh, all each of these different ideas, each of these different components like topics and uh, analytics. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be doing a deep dive into every single one of these things. And I'm already even planning out an online course. So if you're a fan of my courses, you'll love this one coming up. But let's jump into this last one here. And that's going to be the channels. So what are these channels? Well, 
once you create a custom copilot, where are you going to put it? What is it? Where is it going to live? Is it going to live in Teams? Is it going to live in SharePoint? Is it going to live on a custom website? That's really what these channels are defining is where you are going to be deploying this thing. Now, by default, you're going to be able to deploy to Teams and that's pretty much it. Other than the test panel over here on the, the side of the screen, you'll be deploying into Teams unless you do some extra things. You'll see a lot of options here, like deploying to Slack. Use a lot of places even outside of the Microsoft ecosystem that you can deploy to, which is really, really nice. But you'll have to set up some different authentication mechanisms that we'll be covering in the future. But the big takeaway from this one is that the channels in custom copilots define where you are going to deploy this to. That's it. You've already done all the configuration. You've already done all the debugging. You've got a working custom copilot, but now you just need to deploy it out to where it needs to go. That's what channels are all about. So I hope this has been really helpful for you to understand what these things are and how you're supposed to use them. It certainly put everything into perspective for me once I kind of understood the roles of each of those different tabs, the roles of each of the components really, and how they all work together to make one singular custom copilot. Now I'm gonna be making a lot of Copilot Studio content in the future, and I'm gonna go way deeper into this and explain all the, all the nuances of a lot of this stuff. We're gonna do a lot of walkthroughs of full end-to-end -end Copilots, deploying it and everything. So if this is the kind of content you like, make sure to subscribe to this channel, hit that like button, and I'll see you on the next one.